All right, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is K. Michael Russell. I am a comic book colorist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, in this video today, this is the fifth part of my How Not to Color comic series. And in this playlist, I am basically telling you things that are a really common problem, mistakes that beginners often make, things that I used to do. <laughs> so all things that it's easy for me to recognize now because at some point someone told me stop doing that. So the video today is going to be about local color and, and actually more specifically the, the overuse of local color. So first off, what is local color? Uh, local color is the color that things are unaffected by any other atmosphere or colored light, basically under a white, pure light, uh, if there is uh, such a thing. So for example, you know, blue sky, green grass, the apple is red. The local color of the apple is red. And the way that we perceive uh, color changes, of course, depending on the conditions around it. So, for example, if I were looking at this apple at night, then it wouldn't look red anymore. It would look some, it would look a little, have a little blue tint to it. Uh, even looks, if you color pick it, it's probably shifting a little bit more toward purple, you know, than red because it's blending you know, with the uh, blue there. Or, for example, if I was looking at the apple on uh, Mars or something, then it would look very different. It would have a totally different tone or whatever. You get the idea. So, in comics, local color is used often in scenarios where the sun is shining or you're in an office and, you know, the fluorescent lighting and those sort of things. You know, local color isn't always a bad thing. But there's no emotion tied to local color, usually. So in comics, a lot of times you'll find that the color is shifted in some way. And so I'll go through a couple of uh, quick examples here. And I'll, I'm going to circle back to this one at the end. But this is a page I'm working on from uh, Postal number 16. And, uh, and in the script, there's really there's two scenes here. You've got this waitress who is... Uh, feeling very alone right now and she's expecting someone to be there and they're not there and so it's supposed to be a very cold scene okay now with just local color now there's no rendering on this there's not much rendering anyway um, with just local color it's hard to get any sort of emotional reaction out of that and so there's no storytelling concepts applied to these colors you know, same thing when the scene changes you know, we've got these people that are in this cave. They're only really lit by this uh, little lamp here in the middle. And I see a lot of beginner colorists that will just ignore that and think, okay, well, you know, his skin is this color, his shirt is gray, his pants are blue, and there you go. And if you think about how that would look in real life, quote unquote, uh, if that's the only light in the room, then everything's really going to be that color. You know, think of, you know, go into a dark room and light a candle. Um, if it's the only light source, everything's really going to look sort of orange, you know. So a couple of examples. Uh, so this would be a bad example, what not to do. And, uh, and I see that often, you know, where everything's the same color regardless of the situation. So on the opposite spectrum, here's some good examples of uh, non-local color. So... Uh, this is uh, Marta Gracia. This is from Captain America, uh, I think issue number two. And this is a flashback scene. So they've kind of done everything in this sort of monochromatic blues and grays so that when we shift back into the real world, it's going to be really obvious that, you know, we've changed perspective here. But you can see, you know, the, the sky is... We don't see any skies in this scene. Well, you do, but it's a little gray sky, almost greenish sky, and the skin tones are very gray and all these sort of things. So, you know, everything's kind of washed in that. There's very little local color. And what local color is there is just designed to draw focus, like in these uh, right here, like on the, uh, the bags. It's kind of drawing attention to those things. So, again, there's even a storytelling purpose for that. You know, this scene where the action is really happening in the middle of the panel, it's the smallest thing in the panel, though, so how are you going to draw attention to that? So we've got Captain America colored, and actually what's local color, uh, to make sure that he stands out and install this cool that's going on around him. So there's really only a handful of tones being used here. This is all purple, 
uh, and then everything around that is blue and then you've got that local color in the middle so sort of like using local color uh, sort of a, as, as a weapon for your storytelling you know uh, you go down to the next panel everybody else is this green that you see except for Captain America okay so and, and this brings me to another little tangent here uh, I was talking to someone the other day and they said oh this this a scene like this would take me forever because we've got all these plea people to color and colors to pick and all these sort of things but again he sort of washed it all in that green because those things are important, but they're not more important than what's going on with Captain America here. So, or Falcon or whatever he's being called now. <laughs> so, a uh, couple of more quick examples. Um, the scene here. Everything else in the page is either green back here, purple over here, so that the local color is just used on the, uh, on the character that they want you to focus on. So, again, local color is not a bad thing if you're using it strategically I guess I would say especially in a scene like this where you need to draw focus to just this person over here on the side of the panel what else do we have here uh, this is another good example when not to use local color the biggest thing in this panel is the gentleman that is hanging upside down here but your eye is sort of drawn past him to the action because he's dark everything else is lighter and so even though it's the biggest thing in the panel, it's not really the focal point. Um, and that's another good example of, again, not to use local color. Because if he did, then it would pull focus away from what's happening here. And your action is happening down here, really, your dialogue and everything else. Uh, this is a cover. You guys may have seen the video uh, I did for this one. This would have been a very boring cover if I would have stuck with these local colors. Uh, there's just not a whole lot happening there um, from a uh, drama standpoint. So, you, know, you know, this comic, they're going to war. So, um, so again, they're going to war. You've got this very fiery palette, uh, basically reds and orange and yellows. So it's another example of, again, when not to use local color. So, so think about that in those terms whenever you are working on your own pages. And, and just to kind of show you guys where this page ended up, so you kind of got a before and after. And let's do that. There we go. So now, again, the focal point here is the booth, because she's expecting someone in this booth that's not there. So I could have easily, why can't I draw? There we go. I could have easily did all this in local color and it would just look like a picture of a booth sitting there and instead we've kind of darkened everything around it with this cool color so your eye is drawn to that warm spot all right so again not using local color here so much but did here to sort of pull focus and the same thing in this panel she's very forlorn and uh, sad and whatnot so cool colors a little bit of dramatic lighting just to make it uh, more dramatic otherwise and then basically that last uh, scene, you can see where the whole thing is pretty much washed in that orange color. So uh, much more dramatic than the alternative, which is basically just all local color. So anyway, uh, this is a pretty short one today, but it's something to keep in mind. Before you go to local color on a scene, especially night scenes and dramatic scenes and when things are happening, you know, think about shifting your palette around, doing something a little bit different. As always, uh, thank you guys for watching. I have just recently launched a Patreon account. I will link that in the description. You can look at some PSD files that I've uploaded there. I've got a monthly chat that I like to do as rewards, and I'll go do another video and talk uh, more about that soon. But uh, this is the first video I've done since I've launched it, so I thought I would mention it to you guys. Again, thank you guys for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. See you guys in the next one. Take care.